hello students so in last lecture we studied first two mechanisms of the gram staining now let us see which are the further two mechanism which explains the procedure of gram staining which explain the observation behind the gram staining now first which are the first two mechanism as which we studied first mechanism is yes it is liquid content theory we already liquid content theory we already discuss this mechanism in last lecture second mechanism is magnesium ribonucleic acid theory this two mechanism we already see in the last lecture magnesium ribonucleic acid theory now let us see third and fourth mechanism of the gram staining third mechanism is stern and stern theory now what is this stern and stern theory and how this stern and stern theory explain the observation behind the gram staining now according to this stern uh, stern anti stern in case of gram positive as well as gram negative cell wall lipids are present in their cell wall as you know in case of gram negative cells very large number of percentage of lipids are present in their cell wall as compared to the gram positive but what happen in case of gram positive their lipids there in case of gram positive cell wall in case of gram positive cell wall there lipids from the gram positive cell wall consist of large number of unsaturated fatty acids so large number of unsaturated lipids or fatty acids are present in gram positive cell than that of the gram negative cell in gram negative less unsaturated fatty acids are present now what happen this unsaturated fatty acid as you know in the gram staining during the second step we are applying gram iodine as a mordant so when you apply gram iodine as a mordant this gram iodine is a oxidizing agent so this unsaturated fatty acids more the um, percentage of unsaturated fatty acids from gram positive bacteria has attraction uh, they get attracted towards the they have affinity towards the oxidizing agent and here we are using this iodine which is oxidizing agent so this unsaturated fatty acids have more affinity towards the uh, gram iodine there is formation of oxidizing complex a complex is formed this complex is oxidizing complex this complex have more affinity towards the basic steel it has more affinity towards the basic dyes and in, as you know in case of gram staining we are using crystal violet as a crystal violet as a basic steel and when you apply crystal violet which is basic in nature this basic stain get attracted towards this strong oxidizing agent complex this complex has more affinity towards the basic dye so this crystal violet can easily stain gram positive bacteria and once they get stained they cannot lose their color even after the application of decolorizing agent and that's why gram positive cell remains as a white so that is a simple mechanism behind the stern and stern theory now what happens in case of gram negative in case of gram negative their cell wall do not contain unsaturated fatty acids so there is no any formation of such oxidizing complex and that's why this uh, oxidizing complex will not form and during the third step of the decolorization crystal violet enters into the stain easily uh, extracted or they easily removed from the cell cell become colorless and gram negative cell take the color of last stain that is saffron and they will observe the pink in this case still retain this crystal violet because of this property because of formation of this complex they retain basic dye crystal violet is more basic than that of the saffron and this complex has more affinity towards the basic dye so once they get stained by crystal violet they remain violet so we will observe the violet cell and we tag them as a gram positive cell so this is the third theory which explains the gram staining it is called as stern and stern theory now third and last theory is the peptidoglycan theory now all of you know that peptidoglycan is present in the gram negative it is present in the cell wall of bacteria it is present in gram positive as well as negative in case of gram positive cell wall more peptidoglycan is present which is extensively cross linked with higher percentage to that of the gram negative in case of gram negative less cross linked 
less cross-linked as well as less percentage of peptidyl lycan is present in the gram-negative cell. So that is the basic difference in case of gram-positive, extensively cross-linked, extensively cross-linked peptidyl lycan is there. Extensively cross-linked peptidyl lycan is present in their cell wall. In case of gram-negative bacteria, less peptidyl lycan as well as less extensively cross-linked. Here rare cross-link is there. Rare cross-linkage is there. And because of this basic difference of the peptidyl lycan, when you apply first stain of the step gram staining, that is crystal violet, this crystal violet stain this bacteria. Both the bacteria, gram positive as well as gram negative, both the cells become violet. But when you apply the third when you perform the third step, that is use of 95% ethyl alcohol, it will easily dis remove the crystal violet from the gram negative bacteria because they have very less peptidyl lichen, very less cross linked peptidyl lichen is there, so it can be easily, the crystal violet can be easily extracted from, with the help of decolorizing agent from gram positive negative bacteria. And what happens in gram positive bacteria? In case of gram positive, as peptidyl lichen is very rigid, extensively cross linked, once crystal violet enters, it gets trapped in the cell and that cannot be removed by uh, your ethyl alcohol which is used in the third step. So once it gets stained, once this gram positive bacteria gets stained by crystal violet, they remains violent until you apply the crystal violet as well as until you apply the you go toward the last step. So it remains violent but in case of gram negative, they become violent but they lose their color when you apply the 95% ethyl alcohol and finally they take the color of last stain that is saffronin and they object as a pink. So these are the different mechanisms which explains the procedure and observation behind the gram staining. How bacteria, gram positive bacteria becomes pink, sorry how gram positive bacteria becomes violet and how gram negative bacteria becomes pink that was best explained by these four theories which are these lipid content theory, magnesium ribonucleic theory, stern and stern theory and lipid content theory. So for this time we stopped here and let uh, stay tuned for the next example of the differential staining and it is acid fasting. Thank you.